Welcome to Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to your Right Heap the Magicians Podcast. I am your host, Scott Haskin, as we go through every single song that Uriah Heap recorded in the studio, unless I don't know about it or can't get my hands on a copy. Otherwise, we're doing a show about it. That's how it is here. Welcome to the show, guys. I have an interesting one for you today. This is, as far as I can recall, the very first actual instrumental song that Uriah Heap has done. You know, with so many strong vocalists in the band, it's it's almost rare to have a reason to create the opportunity to do a song without a vocalist. But in this case, they did. And uh, the only interesting note that I have on this song besides that is that the percussion was played by Frank Riccati. Uh, you, as you may remember, Jerry Braun played some of the percussion on previous songs, mostly timpani, as I recall. Uh, and I always find it interesting when the drummers don't do the percussion. But keep in mind, there are tons of different percussion instruments out there. They all work a different way. And they aren't necessarily something that drummers per se would know about, would know how to play, would know what the instrument is, would know the proper way or the best way to play it. So it isn't surprising that we would have different people coming in that are more skilled at those instruments. Uh, You know, drummers, some drummers get heavy into the percussion world. Others don't. I like percussion. I tend not to really know what I'm doing with it. If I can make a sound on it that sounds pleasing to me, I'll use it in that way. But a lot of times I don't know the actual like proper way to use uh, a lot of the percussion instruments. I do know how to use drums. I'm a drummer. I've been playing since I was seven. So we're going to get right into the song. Here is the first instrumental. Oh, and also probably the shortest song uh, of anything that Uriah Heap has done. I can't think of anything that was shorter than two minutes and 20 seconds, which is where this song clocks. So um, interesting on many levels. Let's just see how it goes. Here is Roll Overture. Wow, this is really interesting right off the bat. Obviously, very keyboard and synth driven. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Fanfare for the Common Man by Emerson Lake and Palmer just in the way that the keyboard sounds so epic and it's a thematic piece. Uh, You know, typically when I think of Overture, the first thing that comes to mind is it's the first piece at the beginning of a series of of other pieces because an Overture is designed to say, here's a little taste of everything you're going to see. Here's all the themes so that when they come back in the song, you're going to have some familiarity with them. You don't have to figure them out because we've given you that uh, introduction to them here. And then there's they touch on the different themes that play throughout the play or the film or, or whatever it is. And I think, you know, a perfect example would be um, the overture in Jesus Christ Superstar. You know, when you listen to that, you get little snippets of, of pretty much every major piece, anything that's related to a full song, not necessarily some of the fill-in pieces or some of the other instrumentals, usually not the slower pieces, But, uh, you know, it kind of gives you an overview of what the songs are going to be. Then when that song comes on, it already has a familiarity to it, even though you're hearing it for the first time. So that's what I tend to think of when I think of Overture. Here's a taste of what you're going to get. And so it's interesting that this wouldn't be the first song on an album. But then on a rock album, we're really not expecting to hit the themes of all of the, the songs. Because rock songs, you know, they tend to have a lot of parts to them, especially with bands like Uriah Heep. So the concept of Heap doing an overture is pretty interesting. The other thing is I'm hearing some bells. I'm guessing they're tubular bells. That is possibly the percussion that Frank Riccati is playing. Those are very melodic. They're very note driven, whereas drums are not. So drummers, again, don't always think in terms of melody. Some do, and some just think in terms of rhythm. So if you're thinking in terms of melody and you're not a drummer that does that kind of stuff, it would make sense that you would have someone else come in and do that. So again, I don't know if the the bells are what Frank is playing, but it's something that certainly sticks out. I 
I am hearing some very light timpani in the background as well. And again, as I said earlier, timpani was often played by Jerry Braun. And now that he's uh, no longer part of the Uriah Heat picture, um, obviously Frank Riccati is stepping in. So it could be very well that he's playing the timpani on this too. It's very gentle in the background. I actually really like that. It's just a, a slight accent as typically timpani can be a very big instrument. It can be, you know, just boisterous and, and, uh, and huge sounding. So I really like just that it's so far in the background, it almost feels like it's somebody playing it three or four houses down the street. Um, but I love the vocal patches on this. I'm going to say patches because I'm sure that that is a synthesizer. Um, they definitely sound like synthesized vocals. Um, I'm hearing some strings, maybe a choir pad in the background as well. Um, but I don't think any of those are human voices. Still, I love the gentleness of it coming off that intro. Um, this is just pleasing. This is just laying in the boat, letting the water take you where it will. I really love that build. Timpani, by the way, is also uh, melodic. Uh, it's very percussive, but it's also very melodic. They're tuned, they're pitched, they have a pedal that you can bend the, the pitch of them a little bit. So uh, again, it goes back to what I said about the tubular bells as far as why the drummer might not be playing them. It just might, might even though it falls in their general category, uh, it also falls on the melodic side. But I really love the sound there. I love the build. I love how it's getting bigger as we go, which is another thing that you you kind of hope for for an overture piece is that it's going to build into a crescendo, even though you're kind of touching on themes, you still want it to build into something big to get people excited and ramped up and ready to witness the show that they're about to see. I have to point out that I absolutely love the snare sound here. Also, in an overture, it's not uncommon for snares to be played more like a marching band. Um, you know, it's more film score-ish, I want to say. But I love the sound of it here. And I have to wonder if that isn't a marching snare that's being used. Certainly, the style is very similar. But the sound of it is not like the typical snare drum. So they could have manipulated the Lee's snare to sound like this. But more likely, they probably just got another snare drum to be able to do this song. But it sounds fantastic. It, it, you can really hear the buzz, but you can also feel the snap without it being a heavy attack like a, a you know percussive drummer would normally hit a snare. Uh, it's just played a completely different way. There's a lot of bouncing, a lot of rolls off the, the head of the drum, uh, as opposed to just hitting it uh, as you would a snare in a rock band. I have to say, and, and I truly do mean this with the greatest of respect, uh, this seems very, very Emerson, Lake and Palmer influenced, whether it is something that was conscious or, or not, I don't know. But when I listen to the particular types of sounds, we've got sort of a, a synthy brass sound, you know, we've got the little bit of a you know, synth rhythm going on uh, and the way that it's layered, I, it really does seem very reminiscent of something that Keith Emerson would have done. Now, Keith Emerson was an incredible keyboard player and a very brilliant composer. Uh, and I had the pleasure of seeing Emerson Lake and Palmer live. And I have to say, they put on such an amazing show. I mean, everything that they brought to the stage live is just as powerful as what they did on record. And with a band that has so many things going on, especially by one person, let alone what the other two are doing, it's pretty amazing to see that actually performed in front of you. Um, I, I was blown away by their show. So I don't mean that it was it would be a bad thing in any way if this had been uh, influenced by Emerson, Lake and Palmer. I would be surprised if it wasn't. They were a huge band, very influential 
uh, and even though we're talking 1983 here, the band had a pretty big legacy. And this really does feel like something that Keith Emerson would have composed or something similar to what he would have done. So if that was the goal, uh, fantastically done. And if not, um, you still had a, a, you still nailed a pretty amazing piece of music here. What a powerful ending. I really dig this song. I can't say for sure because they're pretty far in the background, but I do think that I hear a little bit of bass guitar. I think I'm feeling it more than I'm hearing it, or it's just a rhythm that's done on the keyboard, but I definitely feel that quick pulse. Um, interestingly, the uh, there seems to be some guitar sounds in there, but I'm not positive they're actually guitar. They could have easily been synthesizer. But uh, there's a lot going on here. It's very complex. It's well mixed, I have to say. For you know, for the engineer, if they're not used to doing this kind of music, they did a really good job on it because this is really more, even though it's synthesizer driven, it's really more of an orchestral classical style song. So uh, those could be mixed a little bit differently. You've got a lot of different placements in the sound field for different instruments. Although this one seems pretty straightforward as far as the you know the panning goes. But very good song. Um, I, I find it odd that you have an overture that's kind of, you know, in the middle of the album. But apart from that, just taking the tune on its own, I really dig it. I think it's great. I think that this could have been built out into a much bigger work had there been a desire to do that. It's very powerful. It's very well written. Lots of stuff going on. Lots of dynamics in the keyboards and some nice filler. Uh, percussion's great. Really like it. Really like the way that's working with the drums. Just some really cool stuff. So I don't know all who played on it, who did what, because I can't really make distinctive, you know, guitar chords and that sort of thing. But it, I could say overall, it is a great song. I really like it. And I'm glad they included it on the album. So that's it, guys, for today's episode. Kind of a short one, but it was a short song. So what do you expect? That's what's going to happen from time to time. While I have an extra second, I'll remind you, if you have not gone and checked out the new box set from the Uriah Heap that's coming out in late September, go check it out, folks. There is a link in the show notes, link on the website. Uh, it is going to be spectacular. Seven t-shirts, seven picture discs, a calendar, inspirational quotes from the lyrics, uh, just all kinds of good stuff to help you enjoy Heap in a different way. And you can also schedule a podcast on that calendar. I'm just letting you know, although the schedule is pretty consistent. So anyway, have a great day, guys. We'll see you next time. Take care of yourselves. Take care of somebody else. It's really easy to do. Just takes a couple seconds to put a smile on someone's day. So do it. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days.